How can you make a transportation system more green? I went to Denmark to find out. The government of Denmark has announced a sort of informal commitment to reaching carbon neutrality by 2050. But Project Zero, which is a private-public business partnership that has been working with the citizens, businesses, and government of the Sonderburg region of Denmark, has committed to reducing the region's carbon emissions to zero by 2029, ahead of the 2050 goal. And they're over halfway there, and it looks like they're going to hit their goal of zero carbon emissions by 2029. How are they doing it? Well, they're attacking the issue from multiple angles, but one of the most important and hardest areas to reduce energy and carbon emissions in is the transportation sector due to the heavy reliance on fossil fuel-based gasoline. Despite that, though, Project Zero and the surrounding community have seen a reduction in both energy consumption and carbon emissions. So how do they do it? Well, one is with the rise of electric vehicles. I'm here in the beautiful, albeit slightly cloudy and rainy and windy, Sonderborg. Project Zero has set up a green transport pop-up where I'm gonna learn about some of the new ways that we can greenify, is that a word? Transportation systems. Let's go. The number of electric cars in one year is doubled in Denmark, and uh, it will probably be four times as much uh, in one year. Uh, the problem is still with electric cars that uh, there are very small batteries in the small cars, and uh, that that means that uh, people have to buy a very big car if they want to drive like five five hundred kilometers. A big person, you know. But if I sit here, look look here at my. The space I have. This is crazy. Yeah, that's a lot of space. This is great. Fixes in post, Wes. So Denmark has a lot of electric vehicles, accounting for about 16% of the global EV market compared to the United States' 2%. And we might not have a lot of great batteries right now, but we might not be far off. I did a little research and the best Electric car battery has a range of 700 kilometers or about 450 miles for one charge, which is twice the range of a Tesla. And it honestly seems like the market is really going almost fully towards electric vehicles. They don't work on the, the diesel and uh, petrol engine because uh, no one sells diesel and, and uh, gasoline cars in five years. Uh, 2030 is the limit for Ford and many others, and and you don't uh, develop an engine that is uh, <laughs> heading for retirement. <laughs> it's sad because there are many iconic elect uh, uh, iconic gasoline cars, Ford Mustang and and uh, the Italian sports cars, but uh, that's over. The limit he's talking about is a proposed ban by the EU on the sale of new gas and diesel fueled cars by the year 2035, aimed at speeding up the transition to electric vehicles. And while the United States doesn't have anything similar to this, it seems unlikely to me and some of the people I've talked to that this won't have any effect on the American car market at all. But he talks about these old classic cars that might go away because of the ban, but maybe they don't have to. I spoke to somebody who renovated an old VW to run on electricity, the first retrofitted electric car street legal in Denmark. I'm here in an old Volkswagen that's been converted to an electric vehicle, and I'm with the owner. Do you want to tell me a little bit about the process, why you did it, your inspiration? Yeah, so uh, the idea actually started um, quite some time ago. Uh, it turned out that uh, rebuilding in classic cars is quite a good or big thing in, in, in foreign countries, uh, especially in the US. And I thought, oh, yeah, I have to do that too. Yeah. But I was also aware that I needed some help. I found a company in Germany, uh, only a couple of hundred kilometers away, and I contacted them if they would be interested. And they said yes, luckily. We are the first ones uh, being able to actually get the car registered in Denmark, mm -hmm. uh, meaning uh, road legal in Denmark. So, uh, but I'm, I'm quite uh, pleased with the, with the build. Uh, yeah, it looks great. Yeah, thank you. 
I was honestly a little surprised by how certain it is that electric vehicles would be replacing gas vehicles very shortly. He's not the only one who's told me that. A number of people have echoed the same sentiment. But electric vehicles are the only way of getting around. What about public transit, like buses, where they haul more weight, so right now with the current battery technology, it's not as feasible to use electric vehicles. Well, here in Sonneberg, they use something called biogas, which is not gasoline, as we call it in America, but instead a natural gas alternative that is sustainably produced by incinerating trash. And right now, all buses in Sonneberg run on biogas. In uh, 2017, uh, Sonnebor uh, changed from diesel uh, to biogas. It saved them about uh, 2,600 uh, ton CO2 a year. Mm -hmm. So now they are all buses on biogas, uh, 44 buses. And uh, other communities in, uh, in South Denmark, uh, some of them are going to transition to uh, uh, elect electricity. Right, so biogas isn't really the ideal solution, but it's the best and most carbon neutral solution right now with the current technologies we have. And it seems like the idea is to replace biogas buses with electric vehicles once that becomes feasible. If we uh, talk about uh, green mobility as the whole subject, uh, then we don't uh, just talk about buses, we also just uh, talk about uh, bicycles. Why thank you, Johan, for that perfect transition. One thing I've loved about Denmark so far is the proliferation of bike lanes and the popularity of biking in general. There's bike lanes just about everywhere in the city center as well as on the outskirts between the towns surrounding downtown, such as the one that I'm on right now. These bike lanes make it really feasible to bike to and from places. There's even some bike lanes inside some roundabouts, if you'll believe it. But there's a way to make it even more feasible to bike to work or shopping, and that's with electric bikes. Biking in Denmark seems to be a big thing. Yeah. Um, how do you think that plays a role in accepting electric bikes? I think it's a, a big deal. Um, it's, it's a bit slow. Last, I think it's last five, six years, um, the e-bike sale has increased. Yeah. yeah. The pros are that you are running far farther than if it's not uh, an, an e-bike. Um, it's more fun. Uh, what are the downsides? The prices. The prices is uh, definitely a downside. How it's much more expensive would you say an e-bike is than a... 10,000 uh, plus more you have to, to yeah. pay. I think that in about 10 years there's no more non-e-bikes. Mm -hmm. uh, all bikes would be e-bikes in 5-10 years. A non-e-bike it's 100% green. Yeah. So the e-bike is less green than a non-e-bike, but if you have an e-bike and you have a car, you take the e-bike mm -hmm. for a short distance. Right. Uh, if it's a non-e-bike, you might take the car. So maybe compared to a normal day, like it's less green, but compared to a car, it's more green. Yeah. Yeah, so I have an electric bike. I bike to and from work just about every single day, which is about eight kilometers or 4.5 miles. It's super easy, to be honest. Um, it takes about 20 minutes, and I barely break a sweat because of my electric bike. Um, it makes it very feasible to bike to and from places pretty quickly. Um, if I didn't have an electric bike, I don't know if I would. So that's what's exciting about them to me. It really opens up a door of possibilities of places you would otherwise try to drive to. You could just bike to and get some exercise in and really help the environment at the same time. So I love my electric bike. I would recommend it to anybody. I just think it's pretty interesting the way all of these parts play together to create a pretty sustainable infrastructure for transportation here in Sonderburg. But there's still barriers to overcome. Man, it's sunny. Uh, yeah, transport is one of the, the last bigger hurdles we, we need to take care of before we, uh, we can go into our CO2 neutral um, goal here in um, 2029. It's in a good process at the moment. There are quite a big interest in uh, EV cars um, and the transformation is going, uh, going rapid at the moment. 
The barriers are um, the infrastructure on uh, on charges. Uh, so that's um, a big um, a big hurdle that we need to take care of, and we're doing that. Uh, and the municipality also have, a, and the state, the government has a big role in this. And then it's. Um, the range of uh, how far you can go, how big the batteries, how great they can perform. So the price is not. So the sustainable infrastructure here in Sonneberg is really impressive, even if there's a lot of work yet to be done. And there are things I wasn't even able to touch on in this video, like an app that allows you to share a ride to grocery store or work with a neighbor. I just think it's really interesting the way that Sonderborg is intentionally attacking infrastructure issues in the face of a climate crisis. And a lot of other European cities are doing the same. And I think there's really something we can learn from that. So I'm really excited to learn more about how Sonderborg is reducing its carbon footprint. So follow along with me in future episodes as I learn more. You can find my sources down in the description. And thanks for watching. Peace. I even biked to a nearby town that was about, um, I get embarrassed when there's other...